All right, ladies and gents, here is your 2425 test review. Um, please make sure you watch over this. You guys answer or you know write down any questions that you have and bring them to class tomorrow because we're going to be going over some things in class just to prepare you for your tests on Monday. But you need to know everything from the first quiz that we took when we talked about all of our operations with um, our complex numbers. We need to write our answers in A plus B I standard form where the real part comes first, the imaginary second. We need to remember that I squared equals negative one and that the square root of negative one equals the letter I. Um, you also need to know the quadratic formula <clears throat> and we need to be able to um, simplify radicals and combine like terms and stuff like that. So when you are given a question that gives you one of the zeros and you have to find the rest of them, okay? I should have a total of four answers for this question. They gave me one of the zeros is positive two I. That means we also need to account for the conjugate, which would be X equals negative two I. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply these two together. So I have X minus two I times X plus two I. When we FOIL, we get X squared plus two X I minus two X I minus four I squared. As soon as I see I squared, I cross it off and put a positive. My two X I and my negative two X I cancel out. So I have X squared plus four. Now we take this and we divide it into our given polynomial. So I have X squared, I'm gonna say plus zero X plus four because there's no X <clears throat> to the first power. So I'm just gonna put in a placeholder. You don't have to, you just need to make sure that you skip a space for it when you're doing your division. But we're gonna divide this into X plus, I'm sorry, X to the fourth plus X cubed plus two X squared plus four X minus eight. So we do our long division and we say first term into first term. So X Mama. squared goes into X to the fourth. I X squared, you have to go to the bathroom, okay. So we're gonna put x squared up here, I'm sorry. Now we're going to get ready to subtract. Get your subtraction ready, now multiply. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times zero x is, we'll just say plus zero x squared, cubed to me. Then we have x squared times four is plus four x squared. Now we get our subtraction ready, so I have to distribute this negative all the way through. So I have two minus four X, two X minus four X squared gives me negative two X squared. X cubed minus nothing negative is X cubed. My X to the fourths cancel and I bring down my plus four. So now we say again, first term into first term. So X squared goes into X cubed X times. Get your subtraction ready. And now we're gonna multiply. X times X squared is X cubed x times zero x is just gonna give me, I'll say plus zero x squared. And then I have x times four gives me positive four x. So now I get my subtraction ready, I gotta distribute. So distribute, distribute, distribute. Four x and negative four x cancels out. Negative two x squared just comes down. My x cubes cancel and I bring down my minus eight. So first term into first term, x squared into negative two x squared is minus two. So get your subtraction ready. Negative two times x squared is negative two x squared. And then negative two times four is minus eight. Distribute, 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 and everything should cancel out nicely. So I this cancels and this cancels. And we're left with x squared plus x minus two. So we set that equal to zero, x squared plus x minus two equals zero. What are the factors of negative two that multiply to give me negative two, <clears throat> but add to give me positive one? And that would be x minus two and x plus one. So my other factors are x equals, oh, put it in parentheses, x equals positive two and x equals negative one. So there's my four zeros. I have them right here. Now we're gonna do the same thing with number two. If you want me to do it in class tomorrow, I will, but we have x equals positive three i, and we have x equals negative three i. So we multiply those two together, x minus three i and x plus three i. That's gonna give me x squared plus nine, and then I take that and I divide it into this polynomial, and you'll get your two leftover zeros. Again, I'll do that in class tomorrow if you want to. 
When you look at this next example, they're giving us the complex zero of negative x, I'm sorry, negative three plus i. So I also have x equals negative three minus i. Okay, we're gonna multiply those two together. So when I bring this over, it becomes positive. So x plus three plus i and x plus three minus i. Now, if you notice right here, the exact same things, we can do our little shortcut and have x plus three quantity squared minus, these are both i's, so we have i squared. Well, when I see i squared, I cross it off and I put a one and I'm gonna change this. And then when I foil this out, this becomes x squared plus six x plus nine plus one gives me x squared plus six x plus 10. And then we're gonna divide that into this big old polynomial here, x to the fourth plus eight x cubed minus 13x squared minus 190x minus 350. And we're going to do our long division. First term into first term, x squared. So get your subtraction ready. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 6x is plus 6x cubed. x squared times 10 is plus 10x squared. So now we're going to distribute our negative here. So I have plus, minus, minus, minus. So negative 13 and a negative 10 gives me negative 23x squared. 8x cubed minus 6x cubed gives me 2x cubed. And I bring down my negative 190x. So now again, first term into first term. So x squared into 2x cubed gives me plus 2x. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 6 is plus 12x squared. And then I have 2x times 10 gives me plus 20x. <clears throat> now we're going to distribute our negative. So boom, 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 boom. Negative 190 and a negative 20 gives me negative 210x. Negative 23 and negative 12 gives me negative 35x squared, and we bring down our negative 350. So first term into first term, I'm gonna say x times what gives me negative 35x squared? It's negative 35. So when we do all of our lovely <clears throat> multiplication and then distribute, we get negative 35x squared, minus 210x minus 350 and then when we distribute our negative everything will cancel out so we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 35 equals zero and when we factor that what are the factors of negative 35 that will give me a negative 35 when i multiply but a positive 2 when i add it would be positive 7 and negative 5. so my two other x values are x equals negative 7 and x equals five. There's my two there, and there's my two there. Same thing for the next one. <clears throat> Again, they gave us x equals four minus three i, so we also have x equals four plus three i. You multiply those two together, get your polynomial, and divide it into this nice, lovely, huge one here. And again, I'll do that in class tomorrow if you have questions on it, but I will post the answers. Okay, for this next set, guys, <clears throat> it says to write the polynomial as a product of linear and quadratic factors that are A, irreducible over the reals. That means I do not want any I's in my answer. And then B, it says, tell me all the zeros. So the first thing I'm going to do is what we always try and do. We always try and factor, all right? First thing I look for is a GCF. Is there a GCF here? No. So I have four terms. Let's see if this will group nicely. If it does, we're in good shape. So out of 2x cubed and 3x squared, I can take out an x squared, and that leaves me with 2x minus 3. Positive 14x minus 21, I could take out a positive 7, and that leaves me with 2x minus 3 equals 0. So if you notice here, our new GCF, what both terms have in common is our 2x minus 3, so 2x minus 3, and then my leftovers, x squared plus 7 equals 0. Now, if I'm going to solve this, I told you guys in class, the easiest thing to do is find the roots first, and then you can work backwards. So I have 2x minus 3 equals 0, and I have x squared plus 7 equals 0. So over here, we're going to add 3 
and then divide by 2. So 2x equals 3. Divide by 2. You get x equals 3 over 2. Here we're going to move 7 to the other side. So I get x squared equals negative 7. When we take the square root of negative 7, I have x equals plus or minus. Super important. Since I have a negative underneath here, my i comes out in front and I have the square root of 7. So right here are my zeros. These are my x-intercepts, all right? This is your answer to letter B. But when you want to write the factors irreducible over the reals, this is your answer for your factors irreducible over the reals. You want your parentheses, you want it factored, but you don't want any i's in it. So you would leave the x squared plus 7 as x squared plus 7 because when you do solve it, it becomes imaginary. So this is irreducible over the reals. You want to make sure that your parentheses don't have any i's in it. <clears throat> Same thing on this one. Same question. Let's try and factor. Is there a GCF? No. Can I break this down? Can I say a times c is 9? Are there factors of 9 that will multiply to give me a positive 9 but add to give me a negative 10? Absolutely. Negative 9 and a negative 1. What times what gives me x to the fourth? Well, that would be x squared. Can I break down x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 1? Absolutely, guys. That's the difference of perfect squares. They're both perfect squares, and there's a minus sign in the middle, so that's why it's that difference. So this is x plus 3. This is x minus 3. This is x plus 1. This is x minus 1. There are your factors written irreducible over the reals. There are no i values. There's nothing imaginary. You have four x intercepts and they happen to be at x equals negative 3 x equals positive 3 x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1 those are your zeros so your factors written over the reals is right here and your zeros are all your x equals all right next one again first thing you look for see if we can factor it if you notice here there's an x that i could take out of all of the values so i'm left with x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 6 equals 0. So let's see if we can now group these. Perfect, we can. So we still have our x outside here. Now what am I going to take out of x cubed and 3x squared? I'm going to take out an x squared, and I'm left with x plus 3. What am I going to take out of negative 2x and a negative 6? Well, that would be a negative 2, and I'm left with x plus 3. So my new GCF that both of these terms have in common is x plus 3. So I have x times x plus 3, and then x squared minus 2 equals 0. Now, some of you would stop here and say, okay, I'm going to leave it like this for the irreducible over the reals. But I told you, go ahead and solve first. x plus 3 equals 0. x squared minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 0. That's a 0. That's good to go. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides here, so I get x equals negative 3. If you notice here, guys, x squared equals 2. This is a real number. It's not pretty, but it's real. When I take the square root, I get x equals plus or minus root 2. So there are my zeros. But if I was going to write my product of linear and quadratic factors irreducible over the reals, I would have x times x plus 3. And then I would have x minus root 2, and I would have x plus the square root of 2, all equals 0. Those are irreducible over the real. So those are my parentheses of what it looks like before I set them equal to 0 and solve. Okay, ladies and gents, when you come to a question and it says use the rational zeros, that the rational zero test is our P over Q. For our purposes, our Q is always going to be 1 right? Your, your first term is always going to be 1, so you really have to just worry about the factors of the last number. So we have plus minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, um, and 24. I know that's a lot, <clears throat> but that's okay. You're just going to use your synthetic division, find to where we can get a remainder of 0, and then we'll see if we can factor from there. But we're finding all of the zeros, all of them, all of them, all of them. So let's try 1. Use our synthetic division. 1, negative 2, negative 13, 14, 24. Bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 and 1, <clears throat> excuse me, is negative 1. Negative 13 and negative 1 is negative 14. Negative 14 and 1 is negative 14. 
negative 14, 14. Is this one going to work? Nope. Okay, go to negative one. So again, our coefficients are one, negative two, negative 13, 14, and 24. So bring down your one. One times negative one is negative one. Negative two and negative one is negative three. Negative three and negative one is positive three. Negative 10 and negative three is negative 10. Negative 10 and negative one is going to give me a positive 10. 14 and 10 is 24. 24 times negative one is negative 24. And 24, negative 24 is zero. So you guys just proved to me right there that x equals negative one is a factor. So now we take our leftovers here. This is our resulting polynomial. Since I started off with x to the fourth, I need to begin this one. One, <clears throat> one exponent reduced. This is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals zero. So now I'm going to say, okay, is there a GCF? No. Can I group this? Unfortunately, no. So what do we have to do? Our P over Q again. So plus minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Start with 1. 1, negative 3, negative 10, 24. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 2. Negative 10 and negative 2 is negative 12. Is this one going to work? No. So let's go to negative 1. I have 1, negative 3, negative 10, 24. Bring down your 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 and negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 1 is positive 4. Negative 10 and 4 is negative 6. Is this going to work? Nope. Okay, try 2. So my coefficients are 1 negative 3, negative 10, and 24. Bring down my 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 3 and 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 and 2 is negative 2. Negative 10 and negative 2 is negative 12. Negative 12 and 2 is, ooh, negative 24. Positive 24, negative 24 gives me 0. So here you guys showed me, ooh, look, x equals 2 is a factor. So now my leftovers, x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Do you know factors of negative 12 that will multiply to give you a negative 12 but add to give you a negative 1? Absolutely, x minus 4 and x plus 3. So your x value here is positive 4 and your x value here is negative 3. So at the beginning, you guys should have known, hey, I'm going to have four x values because I have x to the fourth, and they happen to be x equals negative 1 x equals 2, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 4. Make sure during your work on your test, you don't have to write them all out like I just did here, but make sure you circle every one of your x values so I can see it. All right, we come to another one. This is still, guys, this is a lot of good practice for your rational zeros. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now, this is P over Q. It says use rational zeros. P over Q means the last number. Ay, 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 60. This is Meadows. Why did you give us this? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. There's lots of factors. Lots and lots and lots and lots of factors. But again... Guys, we're good at this. We're going to go through. Be methodical. You can work quickly, but you can also work very smart. So I'm going to try 1. 1, 6, negative 3, negative 52, negative 60. Bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 6 and 1 is 7. 7 and 1 is 7. Negative 3 and 7 is 4. 4 and 1. Is this going to give me Anything that's gonna help us? No, so I'm just gonna to go to negative one. As soon as you see, oh, this factor's not going to work, move on to the next one. There's nothing wrong with that. So now I bring down my one. One times negative one is negative one. Six and negative one is five. Five and negative one is negative five. Negative three and negative eight. Sorry, negative three and negative five is negative eight. Negative eight, negative one is eight. Negative 52 and eight, is this gonna help us? No. So let's move along. Let's try two. <clears throat> so I have one, six, negative three, negative 52, negative 60. Bring down your one. One times two is two. Six and two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 
negative 3 and 16 is 13. 13 and 2 is 26. Negative 52 and 26, is this going to give us? Nope. So let's go to negative 2. You guys are going to ask me tomorrow, are we going to have one this long on your test? Maybe. I cannot tell you yes or no or guarantee you you're going to have something quote unquote easy. They will all work nice and pretty, but you are going to have to put a little work in. So bring down your 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 6 and negative 2 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 3 and negative 8 is negative 11. Negative 11 and negative 2 is positive 22. Negative 52 and 22 is negative 30. Negative 30 times negative 2 is 60. And negative 60 positive 60 is 0. So you guys just proved right here that x equals negative 2 is a factor. So we have our leftovers. This is going to be x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30 equals 0. Does this factor nice and pretty? Unfortunately, it does not. So we're going to do p over q again. Factors of 30 is going to give you plus minus 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, what else? 10, 15, and 30. Okay, start with 1. My coefficients are 1, 4, negative 11, negative 30. So bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 4 and 1 is 5, 5 times 1 is 5, negative 11 and 5 is negative 6, this is not going to work. Go to negative 1, 1, 4, negative 11, negative 30. Bring down your 1, 1 times negative 1, negative 1, 4 and negative 1, 3, 3 and negative 1, negative 3. Negative 11 and negative 3, negative 14, negative 14, is this one going to work? Nope, go to 2. So I have 1. 4, negative 11, negative 30. Bring down your 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Negative 11, 12 is 1. one to, This is not going to work either. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, let's try negative 2. So 1, 4, negative 11, and negative 30. Bring down my 1. 1 times negative 2, negative 2. 4, and negative two, four minus 2, 2. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 11, ooh, gives me negative 15. Well, negative 15 times negative 2 gives me positive 30. What did we just prove? x equals negative 2 is another factor. What do I have left over? x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Do you know factors of negative 15 that will multiply to give you negative 15, but add to give you 2? Yes, that would be positive 5 and negative 3. So you have x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 3. So you have four x values here. x equals negative 2, negative 2, negative 5, and positive 3. Make sure, guys, somewhere in your work, you circle it and I can see it all. All right, last one. Again, I know these are kind of long and annoying, but they're really good practice for you guys to get kind of some fluency and some quickness as you're working through this. But this is rational root, rational zeros test. That means P over Q. So 64 plus minus 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. So start off with 1. My coefficients are 1, negative 12, 48, and negative 64. So bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 12 and 1 is negative 11. Negative 11 and 1 is negative 11. 48 minus 11. Whatever you get times 1 here is not going to give you 64. So just move along to negative 1. 1, negative 12, 48, negative 64. So I bring down my 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 12 and negative 1 is negative 13. Negative 13 times negative 1 is going to give me positive 13. 48 and 13, well, 8 and 3 is 11. Carry the 1, 6. This one's not going to work either. <clears throat> so let's go to 2. So 1, negative 12, 48, negative 64. Bring down your 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 12 and 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 and 2 is negative 20. 48 minus 20 gives me uh, 
28. 28 times 2 is not going to give me negative 64. Let's go to negative 2. So 1, negative 12, 48, and negative 64. Bring down your 1. 1 times negative 2, negative 2. Negative 12 and negative 2 is going to give me negative 14. Negative 14 and negative 2 is going to give me 28. 8 and 8 is 16. Carry the 1. I get 7. Well, oh, this one's not going to work either. All right, let's try 4. <clears throat> this is another long one, I know, but you guys are doing a good job, so keep working. 1, negative 12, positive 48, and negative 64. So bring down your 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 12 and 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 and 4 is negative 32. 48 minus 32 is going to give me 16. And 16 times 4 gives me 64. So what did we show here, guys? Look, x equals 4 is one of our factors. So now I take my leftovers. I have x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Are there factors of 16 that will multiply to give me a positive 16, but add to give me a negative 8? Absolutely. They're both negative 4. So I have x equals 4, and I have x equals 4. So what you guys just proved to me is I have x equals 4 three times. <clears throat> multiplicity. We all know what multiplicity means because we've gone through that before. But you do have three answers. You have x equals 4 three times. All right, coming down here to these ones, I will work out two of these right now, and I'll work out the other two in class if you guys have questions. I just want to make sure that you guys have something like this on the video that you can look at. Um, number 12, I want to bring to your attention. If you guys notice, this says x equals negative 1, x equals 2, and x equals the square root of 5. I told you guys in class, I realized uh, my mistake when I was going over the review, so I want to make sure that I address it right now. But I told you guys in class... If you have an imaginary, you have to um, account for the conjugate. Well, when you have a square root, you also have to account for the plus or minus because when you take the square root of a number, you get plus minus. So this says x equals the square root of 5. You also have the value x equals negative square root of 5. So remember, you have to have plus minus when you're given a square root, and you also have to have the complex conjugate when you're given imaginaries. So make sure you guys notice that. Whenever you're given a square root, you have to account for the positive and the negative. So guys, let's go ahead and set up our parentheses. I like to write x equals whatever the root is so you guys can see. Okay, if I work backwards, the signs change. Remember, your answer either needs to be set equal to 0 or f of x, g of x, whatever equals. So when I move negative 1 over, this becomes x plus 1. When I move positive 2 over, it becomes x minus 2. When I bring over root 5, it becomes x minus root 5. And when I bring over negative root 5, it becomes x plus root 5. So just worry about foiling the first two and the second two and then combine from there. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is negative 2x. 1 times x is x. And 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Combine like terms and we get x squared minus x minus 2. So that's what we have here. Now in our second parenthesis, x times x is x squared. x times root 5 is plus x root 5. x times negative root 5 is negative x root 5. And then negative <coughs> square root of 5 and the square root of 5 is just going to give me negative 5. When you multiply a square root times a square root, I get square root of 25, which is 5. So these two terms cancel out, and you're left with x squared minus 5. And remember, this is always set equal to 0. And then you just multiply again. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Take your time here so you don't make silly mistakes, guys. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. <clears throat> negative x times negative 5 is plus 5x. And then we have negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 and a negative 5 is positive 10. And set all of this equal to 0. And then we're going to combine like terms. I have an x to the fourth. Nothing else is x to the fourth, so we're good to go. I have an x cubed. Nothing else is x cubed, so minus x cubed. Now look at our x squareds. I have a negative 5x squared and a negative 2x squared. That's going to give me negative 7x squared. I have a 5x, there's nothing else that has an x with it, and then I have plus 10 equals 0. Make sure your final answer is either set equal to 0 
or it starts with f of x equals. All right, and then we'll come over here to 13. And like I said, I'll do the other two in class if you would like um, tomorrow if you guys have any questions. So the first thing I'm going to say is x equals 3. I know that's one of the roots. And I also have x equals negative 2 minus i. Since I was given a complex root of negative 2 minus i, I also have to account for the complex conjugate of negative 2 plus i. So get your parentheses set up. Bring this over. It becomes x minus 3. Bring this over, and it becomes x plus 2 minus i. Bring this over, it becomes x plus 2 minus i. And we set this all equal to 0. So I'm going to leave x minus 3 out in front here, and I'm going to use our little trick here to multiply these two together. I have x plus 2 quantity squared minus, I have my i here and my i here, it's going to give me, it should be plus here. <clears throat> it should give me minus i squared. As soon as I see i squared, I cross it off and I'm gonna put plus one. So when we FOIL x squared, x plus two quantity squared, we get x squared plus four x plus four, and then I have this plus one. So I have my x minus three out in front x squared plus 4x plus 5 set equal to 0. And now we multiply. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 4x is plus 4x squared. x times 5 is plus 5x. Negative 3 times x squared is minus 3x squared. Negative 3 times 4x is minus 12x. Negative 3 times 5 is minus 15, and this is all set equal to zero. So combine like terms. I have one variable or one term that has x cubed. It's right there. I have a positive 4x squared and a negative 3x squared. That's going to give me negative x squared, positive x squared. I'm sorry. Then I have a positive 7 and a negative 12. So, sorry, positive 5 and a negative 12. I keep saying the answer out loud. So I have minus 7x, and then we have minus 15 equals zero. So when you guys have answers like this, you should always just have X values and whole numbers. You should not have any I's, any square roots, and your answer should either be set equal to zero or begin with F of X, G of X, something like that. So again, tomorrow in class, I will do um, 11 and 14 if you want me to. I'll also do the two on the front that I didn't do just because they're very similar to the examples that I already did. So come to class tomorrow prepared with questions, guys. I'll see you all in the morning.